Welcome to the AR Performance Squash Advantage, hosted by me, Ahad Raza, a former PSA Touring Pro turned elite performance mentor and coach. I break down tactics, technique, fitness, and mindset by analyzing players from the past and present, both men and women. I aspire to teach, empower, and guide transformation. Let's get started. What's up, everyone? In today's video, we're going to break down the technical side of the backhand drop shot. And we're going to use two players being Hani Al Hamami and Tarek Momin to showcase what different types of drop shot techniques can look like from different parts of the court with different angles and a whole bunch more. The thing I want to start off with is that there is no single way to hit a drop shot. There is no single correct way. Some players will push it, some players will cut it, some players will like side spin and push it. There are different techniques to the drop shot with short follow throughs and longer follow throughs and the arm comes out to the side sometimes, sometimes it goes forward. It totally varies player to player, situation to situation with pressure, angles, all of that stuff. So what you're going to see today are a couple of variations. Now I'll tell you, tell you straight up that the it can get very tricky and arguably the simplest way to do it will be think of just guiding and pushing that ball in towards your destination with a medium follow through on average. Again, if you're right up on the front wall, you're not gonna take a big follow through. If you're really deep in the court, you need a bigger follow through. So there are many nuances to it, but I'm hoping that this video showcases several possibilities for you guys. So let's get this show on the road. My intention as always is to teach and inspire. That's my goal. I'm gonna to hope to do this today with an, an analysis and a comparison of the two players from the midcourt and then from a slightly shorter position in the front of the court. And then I'm also gonna show you a front wall camera angle of a little push drop that Tarek Momin does. So as always, take notes, enhance your learning, watch the videos. You're gonna see one regular speed clip, one half speed clip, and then the super slow-mo. They're very short clips, so they're gonna go by fast. So just stay ready now. Pause the video, make your notes, tell me what you see, and then we'll break it down. Ready? Let's go. Half speed. I'm going to play half speed for you again. Get ready, and here it goes. Okay, let's break it down in slow motion for you guys now. So what we're going to see first of all is this. We're looking at slightly different scenarios. Hani Al Hamami is moving to the ball. So she's under a little bit more pressure. Tarek Momin is set and he's not under very much pressure. We're also looking at the angle. You're going to see that Al Hamami is a little bit wider from the side, a little bit further from the sidewall. Momin is a little bit closer to the sidewall. And again, moment is slightly further in uh, front of the court from the midline, from the short line. El Hamami is right around the short line. So let's continue watching this. You see the players are getting ready with their backswing. And here's where we see their racket preparation is a little bit different in both, in, in the two scenarios you see. Moment is not under pressure. So he has the time to take that proper backswing. And what this does is it also gives him more deception. He can hit multiple shots from that position. El Hamami is moving to the ball. So she's not getting to this big backswing. She's actually staying a little bit lower with, and both players have an open racket face. She's staying a little bit lower because she's gonna use her momentum from her movement to push that ball and cut. It's like a it's like a side cut push, and you're gonna see both players, their swings look very similar in this position. El Hamami is physically lower than Momin because she's running and reaching for the ball. Momin is more set, but you're gonna see that, and this is a common mistake that most amateurs make, is that just because the ball is an easy ball and you're at it, most amateurs just stand upright and they just swing. But what that's doing is that it's taking away from the momentum from the lower body and the hips, which generate a ton of power. And it's you're eliminating that by just standing upright and using the shoulder. So what you're going to see Momin do is he's actually going to bend down and get low and step into the shot, even though he's not under pressure per se. So let's see how this unfolds. 
Now you're noticing what I, you're going to see what I just mentioned. Moment is transferring his weight into the shot by stepping in, bending at the hips, bending at the knees, bending his back. And El Hamami is continuing to use her momentum into the ball. Moment, because he started up high, he's going to drop that racket and then cut through the ball, cut across the ball. And El Hamami is also going to cut across the ball, but she's going to kind of like cut and push it. And here we go. See, look how much lower Moment's gotten now, putting that momentum of his body weight into the ball. And here are the two, two nuances over here. Yeah, I've noticed, noted that both of them are bending. Yeah, you got to transfer that weight and you got to get in line with the ball. If the ball is down by your ankles and you're standing upright and you just put your racket down, your, your technique is going to be all over the place. So you need to kind of adjust your height relative to the ball and your comfort contact zone. And you notice that Moman's arm is kind of down here. If he was under pressure, the arm would be more extended out, out in front of him. And based on that idea of pressure, you notice that Moment is hitting this ball just in line or maybe maybe slightly in front of his front leg. That's generally the contact point for a right-handed player with a closed stance, meaning their right leg is forward. You want to generally hit it just in front of your right leg. In El Hamami's case, because she's stretching forward, she is also hitting it in front, but she's probably hitting it slightly more in front. And her body angle, you notice, is different. She's kind of diagonal. Moment is more facing the side wall. Again, change in pressure approach to the ball. And then what you're going to see from here. So now you see both players, their arms are starting to come out to the side. They're hitting with that open racket face. And what they're essentially doing is they're coming with this open racket face and then they're coming across the ball and then ending out across and forward with an open racket face. So their wrist is cocked and they're coming across and forward. And you're going to see that in a moment. And there it is, see? Arm is, wrist is up. You can see her racket is nice and up. Moment's racket is also up. Arm is extended out. Arm is extended out in both cases. Technique looks slightly different because Moment is probably putting, he loves to really cut that ball and he changes his, he shifts his grip a little bit more. So he's, his racket is a little bit more horizontal here. El Hamami's racket is at more of like a 45, 50 degree angle almost. Now, I'm not going to get into details of like changing racket angles and this and that, but I will say that all high level players shift their grips around a bunch. When you're under a lot of pressure in the back corner, you're going to shift your hand up the shaft of the racket. Um, when you might be hit, want to generate more power, your hand is going to be lower near the butt of the racket. So there are going to be changes like that. Some players will hit with more of an open racket face. Sometimes you flatten your racket face other times to kind of get that ball coming through the court. So there are all sorts of nuances. I, I, I can't get into all those details. That's what the one-on-one -on -one lessons are for. Um, but you can see the subtleties over here. And actually, let me rewind that just a tad. So that's the racket position I was talking about. And you can just see kind of the angle of the arm. And then there's one other interesting thing that you guys will notice. You see that both of them, after they hit their drops, their rackets are right around their waist. They're not dangling by their feet. They're right at their waist and they're ready to get that next ball. Most amateurs, they keep their rackets dangling down by their feet. You can't see my feet, but I'm pretending this is my racket and it's going down. What you ideally want to be doing is get that racket here in the ready position, and this would be around your waist height, ideally. And from there, you can easily, I'm gonna pretend that it's here, you can easily go like this or like this to try to volley whichever way the ball's coming or reach across whichever way you need to go when your racket's down here you got to lift it up and across which takes a lot more time okay so that was an analysis of, of a more or less mid-court drop now let's look at a shorter drop technique in comparison to what we just saw so again you're going to see regular speed short clip then you're going to see half speed and then slow-mo so pause the video, replay it if you need to, and let's check this out. Here's a bit of a slow-mo. Here, I'll just show you this last bit in uh, half speed here. 
when both players are hitting it one more time so you can make your notes and then let's see let's uh, compare notes after and here we go okay let's check it out in super slow mo now and first thing we're gonna see notice the difference in prep so in the last clip that I showed you guys we had Momin whose racket was nice and high and set up in the traditional kind of V position here with a nice grip where you can show different deception. In this case, Momin is actually coming lower the way Al Hamami was in the last clip. Let me ask you guys a question. Why is Momin here? What do you think led up to this position that you see on your screen? And why is Al Hamami here? Take a second. Presumably you answered because of pressure. So in this case, El Hamami was not under as much pressure, which is why she has time to set up. Again, you add deception doing this, there, there are different benefits to this. Um, in this case, Momin was under a lot of pressure. So in the preceding uh, shots leading up to this, he was back here and he had to like sprint to come forward. That's why he's in this big lunge and his racket is sort of in front the way El Hamami was in the previous clip you just watched. And from there, you notice El Hamami is dropping her racket. So this is a typical swing. You drop your racket and then you come across and through if you want to cut the ball like she's going to do. Momin, on the other hand, is using all of his speed from the run that he just made to get here. And he's going to keep that strong wrist and he's just going to sort of push and guide that ball into the front with either a flat or a slightly open racket face. People like Goltier, for example, especially if the ball is glued to the sidewall, will come and sort of side spin, push this ball as well. So many different options over here. So let's check this out. Both players are coming. Both players are getting low to the ball. So again, just like the previous clip where Momin had to get low and put that momentum into the shot, El Hamami is now getting low and stepping into the ball to drive her uh, body weight through it. Momin has a ton of <laughs> body weight going into the shot. He actually has to work more on decelerating himself with that front leg and timing that deceleration with the stroke finish. And there you see, there's Momin made contact with the push and he's taking that ball significantly far in front of him actually, because if this his foot lines up here with the top of the glass, his racket is at least six inches to a foot in front of uh, his, his front leg. El Hamami is hitting more or less in line with that front leg. And again, you see the nuance in position. Because she was set, she came and set up facing that side wall. Momin, on the other hand, because he's under pressure, can't face that side wall. He's coming in at a slight angle to go in and play that ball. So just some subtleties to keep in mind. And then here's the other piece. You see the follow through for El Hamami. She's coming, that, that follow through that you see is because she's coming through and across and she's kind of ending up in this position over here. So she's really cutting that ball as she comes through. Um, and, and you can't take a big swing when you're that close to the front wall because you actually need to soften that ball so it dies in the front. If she went through and forward, well then that ball would not be a drop, it would be more of a drive. Um, Moment, on the other hand, is just pushing that ball through because he has so much energy coming in and he's just putting a gentle tap on the ball. Some people call it a punch or you could call it a push, whatever you want. And then here we're looking at targets. So Momin is closer to the sidewall than El Hamami. If, you just, if I were to draw a line from the service box on El Hamami's side, she's well to the right of the edge of the service box. Momin is inside the edge of the service box. So the angle that his drop needs to take is going to be far narrower or shallower than El Hamami because they're both going for the same shot where they both want it to end in the nick with the floor and side wall. So from Momin's angle, if you watch that screen for a second, if he made contact here, his angle is going to be here into the side nick. El Hamami, because she's wider, her angle is going to be a bit sharper into that side nick. So let's see how they both fared on their execution. So El Hamami's ball hit the wall here, closer to the L in the Dunlop sign. Let's see where Momin's ball hit the front wall. So Momin hit closer to the D. So you can see that's like, you know, between the L and the D, you have probably a foot 
difference in terms of uh, distance from the from the each other, and distance from the sidewall is probably minimal to greater in moment in El Hamami's case. Again, the angle and the position from which you're hitting makes a significant difference. And that's actually one thing that differentiates squash from many other sports because your angles are always changing. So if you think about targets, there is never one target that you want to hit. The only time you can think about that one target is the serve. And you should check out the serve video that I compared Rami and Shorbagi. If you're serving the exact same way from the same side of the court, and you have a particular outcome you want, yes, you have a particular target on the front wall you can try to hit. But for every other shot in the game, because it's totally dynamic and you're never hitting from exactly the same position, you always need to be changing and adjusting your angles. And that's why it's important when you're doing solo practice to practice different, and this is a, this is a really important tip which most people miss, you want to practice from the same shot from different parts of the court with different height, with different pace, with different spins, different swings, like all sorts of stuff, depending on your uh, level. So if you're a beginner, don't worry about all the different spins and swings and everything. Focus on one swing, focus on maintaining your grip, focus on changing maybe the height of the ball, one piece at a time and then gradually build up. So now we see the difference in targets on the front wall and then we can see the outcome, Moman's ball is going to the sidewall nick over there. And there it hit the nick right there. And El Hamami's ball just got the floor very close to the nick. Okay, now we get to watch that same shot that Moman just hit with the push from the front wall. And thanks to Squash TV for making this available to us. It's going to go by quickly, real speed, half speed, and then super slow-mo speed. So get ready, check it out. Here's half speed. I'll play half speed again for you so you can make your notes. Go. Okay, now let's check this out in super slow-mo. We've already seen it from behind. Let's see what it looks like from in front. I see Moment coming in with good pace, taking that big lunge, that racket prep. And we've talked about elbow position in the past. You see he's got a slight bend in his elbow, wrist is cocked, racket is open, not super far back with the traditional V that we talk about, but kind of in front with that cocked wrist. And then from there, he puts that foot down. And after he puts that foot down, you can see he's still got a bit of that elbow bend and that racket, instead of being here, is now dropped a little bit more. And he has to decelerate on this front right leg because he's coming in close stance but he's not totally stopping he's putting some of that momentum into the shot like we've talked about already and then he gets on the ball see he's got that open face and he just punches it and see that racket it follows through I'll show you that again the racket is following through straight and his arm is extended straight and out in front and he's kind of, he's using a slightly different grip. So don't worry about like the nuance of the grip itself. He's kind of coming in this way and then pushing the ball with his racket. But the idea is because he's coming in with so much pace, he's taking the ball in front. It's just a push. He's not letting that arm come out to the side. When that arm comes out to the side, you know for a fact that you're cutting it. This is more of a push. And you see this, the typical elements from a biomechanical standpoint. His back is nice and low. His knee is behind his heel, so he's got that good biomechanical angle. His back foot is dragging in to help keep as a counterbalance for him. And then he comes through that shot. He recoils. Again, that back foot comes in. He's standing up at the same time. A ton of strength required for that movement. And you see that target on the front wall that we already saw from the other angle. And now you can really see he just misses the nick, but it's very close to the nick. And that's why that ball basically fades. And second bounce is well in front of Joel Macon. And Joel Macon is a fast guy. So for that ball to bounce twice there and Joel Macon to be significantly far away from it, that's impressive. So there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you realize that there are several ways to hit a drop shot. There's no one correct way, different scenarios, 
from pressure to angles to position on court to softness to hitting technique it all varies at the highest level if you're a beginner and you're starting off just really think about keeping it simple slightly open racket face and just guide that ball with a moderate follow-through depending on how close or how far you are from the front wall and just guide it towards your target don't think about cutting it too much don't think about going across and around the ball don't think about all that fancy stuff just work on your body angle work on transferring a bit of momentum into the shot and just think about guiding it with a moderate follow-through that would be the those would be the tips that i would give you obviously not having seen you not you know i don't don't take this as 100 percent guarantee for a drop shot but those are some fundamental things that you can think about that energy transfer weight transfer is huge people miss that all the time your spacing people miss that all the time don't try to take a big swing and then cut that ball unless you're very highly skilled and don't just go and touch that ball either because it's not going to go anywhere those are tips that i will leave you with i hope you enjoyed this video as always if you like it give it a thumbs up comment subscribe to the channel share it with others hopefully the more people we can get it to the more support i might be able to gain for the channel and thus create even more effective prettier and powerful videos for you have a wonderful day and i will see you in the next one